Hey guys, I just needed to make a quick correction uh, to the video I released today about Portainer's Mac VLAN. Uh, shortly after releasing that video, Neil Cresswell, the co-founder and CEO of Portainer, reached out to me and had a couple of corrections. So I want to make sure that I get these uh, out to you guys while they're still kind of fresh in my head to make sure that the correct information is uh, put out there. And I don't want to recreate the video. So this is going to be an addendum that'll be linked uh, in tags and comments all, all over the place on the main video. So uh, if we come over here to my desk, Desktop. Uh, some of this will stay the same. Uh, one of the things that I did get wrong is that uh, Portainer does not uh, talk to your router to get an IP address. Uh, basically, uh, it assigns, uh, Docker and Portainer work together to assign an IP address based on the range that you give it. Uh, so what you've actually got to do is go into your router, uh, like I've done here, and uh, dedicate, uh, like I've started, uh, my start IP address is uh, 68.20, and then my maximum number of users is 235, uh, which will actually, I think I can make that. Yep, that's as high as it'll go. So uh, basically that gives me uh, basically 192.168.68.2. Uh, we have to skip one because my, my router's IP address is one. So we're gonna skip one. So we'll get from two to 20 that we can use. Um, so we'll have to block out some IP addresses on our device or on our router to make sure that there are no conflicts. Uh, otherwise, you might be able to do some things. You might be able to, to, to connect but not ping. It, could, it just kind of gets kind of crazy there. So we've blocked out some IP address ranges here uh, in the very first, ha first portion of our IP address. So we're going to go from 2 to 20. Um, and then the other thing that I needed to mention here is that... Um, the uh, the subnet here has to match, and this is where I think a lot of people get confused, myself included, uh, about uh, why things might work, sort of. And that's because this has to match your network perfectly. So uh, as I mentioned in the video, my IP address range is 192.168.68, uh, and then we're gonna start with .0. Um, but then if we come back over here, uh, over to here, oh, actually I lied right here. Right here, it shows our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So what we want to do is come over to this chart that I linked to in the other video. I'll link to it in this video as well. And find our subnet mask. Right here is 255.255.255.0. So our prefix is going to be slash 24. So what we want to do is make sure that, that uh, is, that's all correct. This is correct for mine. Uh, the slash 24 will probably be the case for most uh, common household users uh, who use a you know dot one dot zero dot one dot one whatever uh, slash twenty four is probably what you're going to use uh, like right here I, I've got it easy because mine tells me my subnet mask so I can go use this chart find my mask and then find out what my prefix is going to be um, so this part should be correct then my gateway right here is one nine two dot one six eight dot six eight dot one and we've talked about that that's how I access uh, my router. And then some for my IP range, I want to start with .2. Uh, and I've given myself up here uh, up until about 20. So what I'm going to do is come back over to here. I'm going to find out how many IP addresses I can get away with. It looks like I can do either 16 or 32. Uh, so I'm going to go with 16. So this is going to be a slash 28. Uh, that's going to give me 16 IP addresses at the, at the first part of this. So I'll do a slash 16. Uh, so we've got our IP, our subnet mask set up. We've got our uh, gateway set up. And then we're telling uh, Docker and Portainer to use uh, everything from .2 to about .17, uh, if, if, my, if my understanding of that is correct. Um, so uh, that being said, that's all you should have to do here. I wanted to make sure I got this correct. Uh, this subnet being exact uh, is very important. Otherwise, uh, things just won't work correctly. Um, and then we want to make sure that we block out IP addresses on our router and then assign uh, Docker and Portainer to use IP addresses in the range that we have excluded from our router to be able to use. I, I, I apologize for repeating myself, but I, I feel like I need to uh, partially for you guys, but also a lot for me so that I get my head wrapped around it as well. Okay, so there's one other thing you may need to do uh, in case you can't move an IP address or whatever, for whatever reason, is you can actually come into here and exclude an IP address. So you might say uh, my, um, or you just say NAS equals, you know, 192.168.68.3. Um, and then you might have another NAS uh, that might be NAS2 equals uh, 192.168.68.5. 
um, and then uh, it will exclude those from the range. Uh, Portainer will exclude those IP addresses specifically, so you don't have to worry about any conflicts there. Uh, you can go through and be very meticulous about excluding IP addresses to keep there from being any kind of a conflict here as well. I guess I should, before I wrap this up, I should mention one other thing here. Uh, that is, once we've got all of this set up correctly, uh, what we can do is then create the network uh, and then add our new network and then call this uh, my Mac uh, VLAN like we did before. Uh, we're going to select this as Mac VLAN just like we did before. Again, this is that second part of setting up that network. None of this changes. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that I covered that to avoid any confusion. Uh, so we set up that first part is the configuration. And then this is the network that we'll actually use. Uh, we want to make sure that we have it creation over here. We set up our Mac config or whatever you named your configuration uh, Mac setup. And then we want to enable manual container attachment. Uh, click on create the, the network. And then we can start uh, assigning containers to uh, to the uh, Mac or my Mac VLAN or whatever you named your uh, you're not convict VLAN. So uh, hopefully this helps somebody who got stuck, uh, somebody who's not able to, to get everything to work correctly. Hopefully this little addendum will help with that. Uh, of course, if you've got any questions, definitely let me know. Um, and I will be happy to do the best I can to answer those questions. So uh, thanks for your time. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.